This is the spot where a resident of Betty's Bay on Sunday allegedly fired with a shotgun at what is believed to be a vehicle dropping off poachers. The blast shattered two of the canopy's windows, but the driver was unharmed. The driver then laid a charge with the police, who is now investigating a charge of attempted murder. The suspect is expected to appear in the Caledon Magistrates Court on Tuesday the 28th of July. The fact of the matter is that the people are feeling threatened in their, in their personal space and in their recreational spaces by the, the bands of poachers that walk down from the parking areas throughout Betty's Bay to the beaches. So that is that uh, thing that threatens them personally. Um, the, the people along the the coastline report these incidents continuously uh, through channels, through conduits to the law enforcement. Unfortunately, we know that our law enforcement are working hard and doing everything that they can in their power to manage the situation. But as we know, they are uh, understaffed, under resourced. They don't have the resources to cope with the onslaught of and the overwhelming amount of people that poach. It came to a head last night, um, but it has been an ongoing issue. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, for example, I used to go out to the rocks. There were local poachers, there were just local guys trying to make a living, fair play. And I used to talk to them, sit and talk to them. The whole thing has changed right now. It's, a, it's very much a gang type scenario. Uh, the poachers have become more obviously aggressive, uh, more dangerous, I would say, probably to us. We feel threatened as a community. Um, we feel invaded as a community. Uh, and for the sake of the Biosphere Reserve, it's, it's really an insult to the Biosphere Reserve that the, all these amazing resources being trashed um, through this poaching. I mean, you know, the Perlamon uh, are, are critical to, to the sanctity of the whole thing. And so I, I, I'm here to defend that. I would like to defend the sanctity of our biosphere as both the marine aspect and the terrestrial aspect, of course. It, it, it's something that we're all very proud of and should be proud of. But back to the, the issues at hand, the, I mean, for example, the accused last night happens to be a friend of mine. Um, and I remember even two weeks, probably about two weeks ago now, he, he told me, for example, how he was, the poachers used a vehicle as a weapon and actually hit him. I mean, this is an ongoing thing. It's a build-up, build-up, build-up of a lot of tension. He's not the only one, of course, that's suffering this, this, this tension. The people at the back uh, towards the mountain don't understand fully what's going on. But any of us that live here on the coastline, we see uh, a very, very obvious presence. There's no need to be clandestine anymore as there was. Basically, in the uh, for the reason that uh, there's no retribution, there, there seems to be, we, we feel frustrated for the fact that we have nobody to call. We have called everybody you can think of uh, on you know, between us as a community, uh, but there's, there's very little response. There was a show, there was a public show of a big submarine out here, the fisheries patrol vessel, um, and some, some guys from outside, some law enforcement guys from outside, and everything calmed down, it worked. Okay, I don't think the, the submarines had any particular influence, uh, and I don't think that was sustainable anyway. But the guys on the ground that did come in, they did help a lot. Poaching was controlled, at least in our area. It was probably only displaced, uh, but nevertheless, it was controlled in our area. And, and you could literally feel the community breathe a sigh of relief. Where, where are the poachers? It was great. And, and you know, I mean, today, nobody is condoning what the accused has done. Nobody would condone that at all out of any of us uh, in, in Betty's Bay, I'm sure of that. But. I think we have to look at this as a, as a thing where it has been so entrenched and so ongoing. Perhaps we should just say, guys, the judges or whoever is going to deal with this, let this one go, won't happen again, start from scratch and see if we can talk our way through this and see if we can get some law enforcement involvement um, and even an understand a basic understanding, leave the MPA alone, just at least leave that alone and that will, even if you're going to continue poaching the rest of your life, the MPA can be a source of, uh, of growth in other areas outside of the MPA. It'll be the place where abalone are seeded from and outside. It's a small little area, just leave that alone. Give us the piece that something is left for all of us.